Welcome to all the Dhamma practitioners. Today is Friday, 28th of January, which is coming close to Chinese New Year. This is held as the New Year of the Chinese people who will gather together during this time, and they will also clean their homes thoroughly, give worship to the deities and other sacred things, and ask for blessings from the elders. And gathering together to eat is a good thing as it makes the family be united with warm feelings. The children and grandchildren will come to give their respects to their parents. They express their katanyo katawedita, gratitude and repaying that. And then our parents or grandparents will give us blessings. And they don't only give blessings, but they will give ampao, red money envelopes as well. This is given as a form of encouragement and a present for the new year. And each nationality, each language has something like this. Whether it is Westerners, Europeans, Asians or other ethnicities, they all have their own cultures and traditions. And then when it comes to the new year of that country, they will give respect to the elders. And the elders will give to the children and grandchildren give money, or a gift that the children like. This strengthens relationships with each other. So dana, giving, builds relationships between those of lower status and those of higher status. Those of lower status who receive it have appreciation to those of higher status, and those of higher status have metta, goodwill and compassion for those of lower status and they may give more than just gifts, but also give encouragement and blessings as well. So what does this word blessing mean? Blessing is a word the monks use, which can mean a resulting benefit, or a special privilege that goes according to one's wishes. It translates as something excellent. So whatever it is, that is excellent. And the most excellent thing is the triple gem the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. It is something that is excellent. And so when blessings are given, there must be wisdom coming up from it. Because mindfulness is a blessing, samadhi is a blessing. All that is good and beautiful is all a blessing. Here we look at blessings, our aspirations. What is a blessing that is good, beautiful and excellent? It is something that has superior worth. It is something which has great value that we aspire to. And it is made up of many things. But if we look at the things that we are familiar with, then the blessings are about ayu, having life, wana, having beauty, sukha, having happiness, bala, having power. These are the four blessings that we hear of often. Like, may you have a long life, May you have a bright appearance, have happiness, have strength, which is being free from sickness and pain. And there is also boga, boga sapateya, or having wealth and possessions, which is also contained in the blessings given. And it's not that after we have received the blessing for all these things, that we will succeed in them right away. The important thing is that we must practice to make it arise and happen for us. But to give blessings is to express good wishes for each other, to give encouragement to each other, and to give benefit. Giving them the best, saying, may you get these things, may you meet with these qualities, may you children gain these things. And then the children will give blessings to the adults, saying, May you have a long life. May you be a shelter and protection for others. This is what we call giving encouragement to each other. So though we live in a world where its state has nothing that is truly certain, but each side has sympathetic joy, a cheerful heart, consideration and warm-heartedness. There is deep appreciation in the metta, the kindness and goodwill of the giver, and the receiver. There is joy and happiness in the heart. But if we have real firm confidence in the blessings that they have given us, 
then it gives us motivation and inspiration that we will get it, we will do good, and we will follow it, and then we will be able to gain success. But we have to understand that we must have wisdom in the things that the elders have passed on to us, in the things that they have given us blessings on. Sometimes the elders may give us valuable gifts before they pass away from this world, before they go to a good destination, a heavenly realm. And this can be given in ways of practice or through the Dhamma that they give us. And so we need to have the wisdom to understand them. I have one story to share with you. There was one Chinese person who was in business. He had patience, had forbearance, had determination, and looked after his health well. But when it came time, he had to pass away from this world. And here, he wrote a short note of four points that he left in order to teach his son. He had left his son a billion baht as inheritance, but he also gave a Dhamma puzzle to his son. He wrote to Adi, who was his son, Son, you must follow what Dad has instructed. There are not many points. Dad has gone well already. Adi, do it, okay? Adi, there is no need to worry or be sad. Dad has gone well. Dad is at ease and happy. I have gone with happiness. So he wrote, 1. Don't go to work in the sun. 2. Eat delicious food. 3. No need to do the accounts. 4. Go home late. Adi, the son, had a lot of love and respect for his father. Whatever his father instructed, Adi would follow it. He thought what his father had given pleased him a lot. To not work in the sun, then there's no need to get hot while doing work. To eat delicious food, he liked this for a long time already. Before, he did not have much money, but now the father left him a billion. He would eat to the fullest now. There's no need to do the accounts. He was already lazy for a long time to do the accounts, so that was very easy. No need to account for income and expenses. To go home late? Yes, I can do it. I will do that for you. Adi would arrange it following his father. He thought his father had a really good heart. How come he loved him that much? To give him four points that were exactly to his liking. So Adi followed them. And what was the result? In two years, we should all likely know. The result was that from one billion, he was left with very little. It was almost all gone. So here, Adi started to be able to think about it for himself. When his money was about to finish, he lit some incense and told his dad that, I did it following what you instructed me, dad. I thought from one billion, I would have about five billion. But why, dad? Now I'm about to finish the money. Dad, what do you want me to do now? Do you want me to be worse off than this? Dad, please tell me what I should do. Please tell me. His dad, who was a Dewata, a heavenly being, was very troubled, and he couldn't eat or sleep. What he had told Adi would have made Adi more richer and have mindfulness and wisdom. But his son had too little mindfulness and wisdom. Back then, I only had a little time. Then I was about to die, so I couldn't write it in detail, so I told him in brief. So his dad came into his son's dream and said, Son, Ati, Aya, son, you have misunderstood. Listen well to dad, Ati. The first point that I said don't go to work in the sun, dad meant that to go to work when the sun hasn't risen yet, or you have to go to work before the workers, so they have an example. Then the workers will follow our way. It's not that they follow our orders. Son, do you understand? Son, you need to be an example for your workers to see. It's not that you sleep in and wake up late, or go to work in the afternoon. Then you will lose it all. The workers will be lazy following you, and there will be no one to look after the business. Son, if you stay up late, you wake up late, 
go to work at 3 p.m., then the workers will cheat you of everything. Will you be left with anything? The second point, to eat delicious food. Son, do you know when food is delicious? Dad has gone without. Dad has had little before, hardly having anything. This is when the food was very delicious. Son, do you know this? But when Dad had a lot, had billions, I never felt the food I ate was delicious, not delicious at all. But when Dad was hungry, Dad could remember that was when the food was really delicious. So Dad said, If you are not hungry, don't eat. When you are hungry, then you can eat. Lots of it, and delicious food too. Son, it's not that you eat shark fin and hotel food every day. And when you are full, then you eat more, or eating whatever pleases you. This is called eating extravagantly, eating oneself bankrupt. This is not it. Son, you need to know about being economical and thrifty. The third point, no need to do accounts. Dad has good wishes for you, son. If you do business on credit, then you have to do accounts. Otherwise, they will cheat you and not pay you. Then you'll have a headache. So Dad said you can sell in cash. There's no need to sell on credit. Then there's no need to do the accounts. But it's not that you sell on credit and then don't do the accounts. That is not right. Then you will just go bankrupt. Son, if you sell on credit and you don't do accounts, you will just lose it all. Son, you have misunderstood. On the fourth point, Dad said to go home late. Dad didn't mean to go out for fun. It means to have the workers go home first. And then, son, you turn off the lights, check the lights, be economical with water and electricity. Make an example so the workers see you. Be careful and thorough. It's not that you go out for fun and drink alcohol every day. Not going out traveling and finding fun and entertainment and going to this and that event. If you don't go bankrupt today, then which day will it be? At best, you will last two years. Son, if you do more than you are now, then you will be worse off than you are already. So in this, you have misunderstood. Son, you are like someone that has walked the wrong way, like you are limping onwards. This is not right. So son, you go find your own money now. Dad is going now. The deleters are calling me back now. But don't forget to look after your mum. May your mum have a long life. She doesn't need to come find dad any time soon. There is no need to rush. Stay a long time and make merit and borrow me first, so that she can stay with dad a long time. Dad has stayed for long already, so I'm off now. So we can see that everything needs mindfulness and wisdom. The son didn't know it. Doing it, he thought that he had Dhamma already and was doing it correctly. But this is wrong determination, wrong concentration, and establishing oneself wrongly. Then one will be bankrupt and all gone. But if he establishes himself correctly, becomes diligent and hardworking, is determined, and firmly practices building goodness, is diligent like his father, then he will be rich again like his father, or even more rich. So here, this is a lesson that teaches us, that in all things, even though we have received teachings already, we need to be imbued with our own mindfulness and wisdom. We don't just follow our moods, follow our mental defilements, not understand the deeper meaning, and establish ourselves wrongly, incorrectly, and then, when the results come, we will be bankrupt and lose everything. So today is a new year, and may you all have happiness, even if you are not of Chinese background, but we are all Buddhists. And so when Buddhists come together, we can give blessings to each other. We greet each other and wish that may everyone have happiness, prosperity, advancement, and a long life. Even though one more year has passed, may you be ones who set yourselves up correctly. Be ones with mindfulness and wisdom. 
know and understand the Dhamma that the elders and ancestors teach us, or truly understand the Dhamma that you are learning. So when we get to this new year, we reflect that in the old year that has passed by, we have had many experiences and circumstances, and gathering together here for this online Dhamma session, whether being a monk or laity, there may have been some bad feelings or worries, which are normal for the mind that is currently travelling on the path to the end goal. There may have been some conflicts, and so may each person give their forgiveness. Or when we are with other fellow people in the world, we may have had some moods of conflict with each other, which has brought up bad feelings and differences, so we give forgiveness to each other. We reflect that all people have good wishes for each other, but that which is not good is just the delusion and ignorance that covers over the hearts of every person from time to time. So when it comes to this occasion, then it is the time that we redetermine the new year. We recommit our efforts to train ourselves to be new, to have a new mind arise. We can see that the children in the Mysore Centre, they have redetermined and recommitted to build anew, to not say bad things, to not lie, to clean around the Bodhi tree, to clean the altar puja area, to have gratitude to those they are indebted to for their gifts of food, water, shelter and residence, and to go for arms round every day or being determined to do various acts of goodness. So this is correct to do for the International New Year that has passed. And then in the Chinese New Year, we can establish our good intentions. We decide to do them one more time. So we can re-establish ourselves like this often, because our mindfulness does become weak and our wisdom reduces, so we have to redetermine it anew and we can even redetermine it every day, so that it becomes a new day every day. Then like this, we will go on the right path. So may each person, each mind, each life have prosperity and abundance. May you grow in blessings.